So based on today's uh, discussion, can you say every mithya contains a satyam inside? Yes. Sorry, can you repeat the question again? I'm saying based on today's discussion, can we say every mithya contains a satyam inside? Yes. Good, good question. Yeah. So, so the way to way to appreciate that is mithya always depends on something else for its existence. Uh, so, just to repeat the question in case others have not heard. Does every mithya contain satyam inside? That is the question. Okay. So, mithya exists. Mithya exists. That much we know because we see objects, objects exist. So, first observation is mithya exists. Second, second thing we learned is mithya depends on satyam for its existence. And mithya exists, remember, first thing. Therefore, Satyam has to exist. And Satyam can't exist somewhere else and Mithya is existing here. That is not possible. So, Mithya depends on Satyam which exists exactly where Mithya exists. Okay? So, true. That is correct. And you used the word inside. Okay? You used the word inside. Correct? Satyam exists inside Mithya. So we need to understand. So inside means what? I am inside my home. There are so many walls. I am inside. This inside we can understand. And the water is there inside the bottle. All this we understand very well. But there the water is different from bottle. This body is different from this home, apartment, this building, this construction. But is, is table different from wood? As distinct as the water and the bottle. So we need to understand that. Correct? So the inside you used has to be different from the inside used when I say water is inside the bottle. Okay, just keep that in the back of the mind and don't get, let's not get carried away by the word inside. That's all I'm saying. Okay, because we can't say wood is inside the table. Then what is the table you have to ask? Table also is wood. So, therefore, we can't, we can't, we can say, yeah, in a matter of speaking, wood is there in the table. Perhaps a better word is in, not inside. <clears throat> wood is there in the table. I think that much we appreciate. If you say inside, then suddenly we create a dichotomy as though there are two things and one is inside the other thing. Okay, we will leave that discussion there. But that's a good observation because that is what that observation is so important because that is what allows us to see Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. And when the Shastram says that, everything here is Brahma. When the Shastram says, what you said just now has to be recalled. Every object has Satyam in it. Whether the object is this small bottle or this big building or this big planet or this big solar system, the Satyam is there in that. And that satyam cannot, can it be different? The satyam of the bottle is different than the satyam of this body is different than the satyam of that tree. We need to think through. Are there so many different satyams? Or can there be only one satyam? If the answer is there can only be one satyam, then, then it becomes so clear Everything is Brahma, Brahma Mukate. You know, they say Brahma Mukate par. That is where Brahma Mukate comes. Okay. Okay. Uh, when uh, Harpasadi, you had a question. Go ahead. Yes. So, we have to. Atma is Satyam, is a Pramana. 
is a Shasta Pramana. Since it is a Pramana, we have to believe in that. If you do not believe in that, the whole thing collapses. So we have to believe in the Pramana that, that Shastra is a true thing. Correct. So I'm going to mute you, Harpasadji. So the question is Atma Satyam. <clears throat> It is a pramanam. The shastram is telling us that very true. If the shastram were not there, I would not, I cannot even guess that. And I must believe it. Otherwise, the whole thing falls apart. The whole thing collapses. This is the question. <clears throat> so look at this. Yes, the shastram says it. And we already saw it is a Pramanam. Shastram is a Pramanam. And yes, until I appreciate it, I must believe it. Now, we saw the property of a Pramanam. What is Pramanam? Pramanam delivers some data to me. Like the eyes are delivering so much data. And I make sense out of that data. I have to make some sense out of that data. Finally, I have to make sense. And I have to operate the Pramana. So I am now operating the Shastram, the Vedas, the Upanishad. And it is telling me something about myself. Okay. It is telling me something that I never heard of before, that I never suspected. Now, when you say, Haraprasadji, that if I don't believe it, that whole thing falls apart. If, if I don't believe a fact, why should that whole thing fall apart? A fact remains a fact forever. Okay. So if I don't believe that the earth revolves around the sun, I only believe that the sun revolves around the earth, then what falls apart? Does physics fall apart? Physics doesn't fall apart regardless of what I believe or I don't believe. My beliefs belong to me. My beliefs don't change anything in this world. I mean, my ability to act and do things depend on my beliefs, my convictions, no doubt. But 2 plus 3 is 5, whether I believe it, whether I am a mathematician, whether I am an illiterate person, all this doesn't matter. Whether I believe the teacher who is teaching this and all that, it's absolutely irrelevant for the fact to be a fact. Correct? Now, if it happens to be a fact, so let's, let's put if. If that, what the Shastram says, happens to be a fact, then what is going to fall apart if I don't believe it? I am the one who is going to fall apart. I am the loser. Because here is a fact that is not appreciated. And it, it is intricately tied to my life. It is my life the Shastram is talking about. I am worried about my life, finally. I am worried about my my sorrow is what is my problem. So that I is what the Shastram is talking about. Therefore, I can believe something that the Shastram says as long as it is not against reason. As long as it is not against reason. Remember that. This, just because the Shastram is there, it cannot say something unreasonably. See, that's the beauty of our Shastram. It doesn't worry about this Laukika things in this world. It doesn't talk about it doesn't talk about mathematics. It doesn't talk about physics, chemistry. It doesn't worry about all these things at all. Amazing it is. Because that is science and yeah, you are you're welcome to study and know it. And the Shastra says what I am going to say 
will not contradict anything you have understood, discovered, invented, and anything else you are going to invent also. Correct? Therefore, when the Shastra, when it is impossible to contradict the Shastra, which we will appreciate as we go along this course, then the belief that I have in the Shastra can only bless me. Only bless me. You have the right, Haraprasad Ji, to refute that statement. We all, have, we all do it. In fact, we must refute the statement. We must try to. In the process of understanding, we do refute it. We do look at all cases which can be different, which can negate the, a particular statement. We do that. Part of the teaching also is, is involves that kind of analysis. So that's the that's the power of the Shastram. And so we are blessed to believe it. And uh, the one who doesn't believe it, it is not a loss to the Shastram. It is not a loss to the Shastram because we can see that uh, we can see that our through our acharyas to our parampara we can see how that is being that is manifest that truth is manifest like you see mathematics teachers and mathematics departments it's all coming and so nobody can ask the question how do you know two plus three is five nobody can ask if you don't know you are welcome to know that's all we can say you are welcome to disprove it if you want that also is perfectly fine so disproving our Shastram is full of debates and uh, this whole topic is debated. You know, there is Advaita, there is Vashishta Advaita, and there is Dvaita, etc. And very beautifully debated without killing each other. There is a lot of debate going on in our culture and no killing because commitment is to the truth, not to go to heaven. Because if going to heaven becomes a goal, then somebody can tell me, you shoot these fellows and you will go to heaven. This kind of idea we don't have. So you, I, I'm purposely telling all this because they're all connected. When I look at all these religions, um, we, we, we should compare and contrast. And we can see where all these ideas are coming. And so, Haraprasad, the short answer to your question is, yes, until I know something, I must believe that something. There's no choice. And nothing wrong. It is a blessing. In fact, what they used to say, in our culture, we say that, hey, you must keep a Bhagavad Gita book in your puja room. And that itself will bless you. How, how keeping a book in the puja room and I don't even go to the puja room. Mother is doing puja and wife is doing all the puja and I don't go to the puja room. And how Bhagavad Gita will bless me? And you ask him, you study Bhagavad Gita, he says, oh, it is there in my puja room. Yes, we also have a book, Bhagavad Gita book. And this fellow doesn't even know what Bhagavad Gita is and what who is talking, what dialogue is happening. Nothing he knows. And still we say, the Bhagavad Gita will bless him. We say that. Why? Yeah, we say that because someday, at least he knows the two words, Bhagavad and Gita. Are, that's a great start. That's a fantastic start. So that itself is a blessing. So someday somebody will say, Are, oh, let's go. Yeah, Upanyas chal raha hai. Bhagavad Gita ke baare mein. Ah, Bhagavad Gita. Acha. Kya hai ye? What is all this? Yeah, chalo, let's go and find out. Just one hour. That's it. Blessed. Bhagavad Gita book in that puja room has blessed this fellow. Yes or no? Correct? That is what we say, blessing. That is what we say. We don't know how blessings come to us. Good question, Habrasaj. Belief versus uh, belief is an important topic. We'll continue to cover. Yeah, Prasad ji. Prasad and then uh, Sajeev ji. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, no object exists on its own apart from its cause. By itself, apart from its cause. That's what the statement, right? Uh, based on so, so far what I understood. And uh, Atman is Satyam, Jagat is Mithya, right? Any other thing, uh, objectified things are all Mithya. Uh, so, 
then if you divide these two, the Satyam and Mithya, now like you just mentioned earlier, there are two concepts, though they were not mentioned earlier, but you just mentioned Advaita, Advaita. Now, is Dvaita, based on that, can I conclude that Dvaita is, I would say, samsara, and uh, Advaita is uh, moksha, or liberation, if you say in English. So that's the question, simple question, but uh, I don't know whether we can, I can ask the other question, which is related to the first question that Dvaita, if Dvaita is samsara, then what Dvaitans talk, what do they say about this? Like, I mean, what would be the moksha in their concept? Sure, sure. Yeah, good question. These are all good questions. Go ahead and mute yourself. So, the uh, first question is, you made a statement that uh, Mithya, Satyam is the cause of Mithya, you said. <clears throat> Uh, in our analysis. So I have not used the word cause yet. And uh, so Mithya depends on Satyam. Satyam is independent of Mithya. That is what we said. Like the table wood, like the wave and water. The cause aspect we have not co covered yet. <laughs> okay. So yeah, coming back to your other question, Advaita, Advaita, etc. Yes. According to the vision of Advaita, Dvaita isn't sufficient. Means Vaita is a, creates a dichotomy, and so Dvaita thi bhayam bhavati. So any whenever you separate two things, whenever there is something that is separate from me, that something is a cause for fear. So Dvaita can never be a cause for moksha. That is what Advaitin will say. Dvaitin will say, no, no, that is not it. Hey, you worship this. This particular, you know, Vishnu or whoever. And Vishnu is not same as you. How can you be Vishnu? You idiot. You don't even know how to spell Dvaita. And you are saying you are the whole. Okay. Yeah, he may, he may say that. And so Vishnu is different. Did you create this world? No, I didn't create this world. Okay, then what are you talking about? How can you and Vishnu be identical? And so he says, therefore, Vishnu is up there. He's not here. And moksha means going to Vaikuntha, Vishnu. That is that is his thesis. And he has he will interpret all the statements of the Shastram like that to come to that conclusion. And there is there is a debate back and forth, and we will, you know, one will try to prove the other as, as having a flaw, and we will show what is a flaw in their logic. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So finally. Can both of them be correct? Okay. That question can arise. Correct? Can both of them be correct? So when we are talking about knowledge, generally you can't have two, three things being correct. Not possible. Two plus three is always one number only. And you can't, we can't be compassionate and say, Are, aapko, you can take two plus three to be four. And you be compassionate. The teacher is so compassionate with all these students. And uh, are you what did you do? Two plus three is four. Acha, parvane. You are also correct. And in, in in India, some of these things are there that no no student should be allowed to fail. All these funny ideas we Indians have developed. And so we can't, the teacher can't allow these children to fail. Two plus three, four, okay. Two plus three, six. Are chalo, you are pretty close. Six is close to five or not? Yeah, then what is the problem? Did he say six hundred? No, see, he's smart fellow. He said six at least. So you have to give him credit. This is how we Indians think sometimes. This is our governments and all. If you see the way they behave, it's just crazy. So, so therefore, so yeah, finally we will say Dvaita, Dvaita, all these things. Yeah, only one of them has to be true. And so our commitment to truth is what will take us to that truth. So we have no we have no problems and that is why we debate also. We won't say, oh, if you break the Dvaitic argument here, you will go to hell, Prasad. So this idea is not there in our 
culture. This idea is not there. So we are fearless about all these things. We talk about all this openly. So that will take us, that will bless us. So we will, hopefully Prasad, that will answer to some extent your, your question. Okay, so Venkateshan Ji had raised his hand before. Um, can, we simplify, can we simplify this complex topic? Shakti is Satya, Shiva is Mithya. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Shakti is uh, Satya, Shiva is Mithya. Okay, go ahead and mute yourself. Material and uh, Shakti. Like that, Narayana and Magarakshmi. Or Narasimha and Magarakshmi. Yeah. So, can we simplify the topic if you say? Then, then Haraprasadji will ask you, hey, so I have to believe this. That Shakti is Satyam and Narayana is Mithya or whatever you said, I have to believe you. Because I don't know Shakti, I don't know Narayana. So, now you have to educate me all these things. So, there is so much to see. Our, our approach is one of Bhakti and appreciation. Bhakti will lead us to appreciation. So when you say Shakti is Satyam, then you have something in your mind that you want to communicate. You want to communicate Satyam. You want to communicate something called Shakti. And you must be able to communicate that. So I don't know if that is a simplification or not, or complication or not. I don't want to say it is complication, but we have to make it appreciable to the human mind. So whatever you said also has to be explained properly. And so we, when we stop at the level of belief alone, then we can stop anywhere. We can stop anywhere. You must believe that you are Atma, that you are Puranam, if I say then over, there is no more teaching. You believe it, I said it, my job is over, your job also is over. So we can move forward and we lead our life saying, Atma is Purnam, I believe, I believe in this, I believe in that. But does belief really signify moksha? That is the question. Can belief be a final solution to a problem? Yeah, this is an important question. We all have to ask this question to ourselves. Okay. So, I, so what if the belief is wrong? Belief itself means it can be right or wrong. So, world over people believed that the sun was rising. And crystal clear, it's so obvious that the sun is rising. And in Europe, they used to they used to kill people who said the sun was not rising, the sun is not moving. So that's so the when you are Venkateshan ji, when we are committed to the truth, we can't accept, we, we are well, we will believe, no doubt, but we will we will not stop until the belief becomes a reality for us, correct? Until you know, why should a scientist look at the sun and say, wait a minute, is the sun really moving? Why should a human mind think like this? Is the sun really moving or am I moving around the sun? That, to ask the question requires a great human mind. Beautiful. So therefore, uh, you, I don't know how to answer your question. Simplify when you say, then simplify for whom? I think it looks simply, simply, simple to you. But in Vedanta, we have to explain a lot. We have to bring in, bring in the analysis of the world, which will come later. <clears throat> now we are doing Jiva, this body, this mind, this Atma. And then the Jiveshwara Aikyam is there. And so if it helps you, then I think that is good, Venkateshan Ji. <coughs> but we are following this approach given by our teacher here. And that's the uh, traditional approach in uh, the, uh, the Vedanta and other other topics, other uh, other schools, as they say. Also, it is similar. Okay, so I think uh, Sajiv Ji is there. Uh, we will have one more question. I think it's already eight o'clock here. 
Uh, go ahead, Sajeev Ji. <coughs> Namaste Jai Kumar Ji. Is, is it, if the time is up, I can um, wait until next week. You know, it's, it's fine. I just uh, have a question, but we can do it next week also. It's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, so we talked about uh, Satyam and Midhya, Jai Kumar Ji. And uh, one of the things I thought you said, and I thought, the way I understood is uh, at a cognitive level, we have to understand uh, Satyam and Midhya and uh, separate them. So what's next? After, after understanding uh, Satyam and Midhya to be separate, should I just um, not, in, uh, knowing that Atma is Satyam and everything else is Midhya, should I not interact with anything? Or should I also understand that Satyam is in and through all this Midhya and should continue to do what I am doing? What is the practical benefit of having this understanding at a cognitive level? Right. Good question. <clears throat> so what is the practical benefit? Go ahead and mute yourself. <clears throat> so... Well, one practical benefit is moksha. Okay. So, which we are, of course, appreciating. I'm not asking you to blindly accept these things. And so, when th th the human being is claims to have a lot of problems that one is wants to get out of, See, if somebody says, I have no problem in life and uh, life is great and all that, that's fine. Life can be great and uh, be what you are. But the fundamental problem of I being a mortal is not acceptable to the self. I being a victim of so many different things, victim of people around me, all these things are there. Not just mosquitoes bite me, but other people also seem to bite me. This is my idea. Correct? So, this mind which is beset with problems, when the mind is told that that you that you think is a victim cannot really be a victim. Suppose the Shastram proves that. Sajivji, suppose the Shastram proves that you are not a victim of anything. You are not, you are Amaraha. Sajiv's another name is Amar. Suppose I, Shastram says that. What is the benefit of that? Tell me. And you say, and you say, yes, I got it. I got it. You say that. Is there a benefit or not? So we need to think through it. We need to think through it. I'm not saying you should answer the question now. The benefit is that I am not I am not what I thought myself to be. I am more, much, much, much more than what I am. And so that's the benefit. That's the benefit. And uh, we may not appreciate it now. But as we begin, as we begin to learn more and assimilate this, we will begin to appreciate the, the magnitude of that benefit. Okay. So right now it is apparently theoretical. Apparently theoretical. I, know, I now learned a new concept called Vidya and a concept called Satyam. So that is why these concepts don't help us. Only when something is thoroughly understood, it can bless us, correct? So, same thing, same thing here also. So, uh, so yeah, the benefit is there. And yeah, continue to do what you do. And that is, that is there. Vedanta doesn't promise anything like some people promise. And uh, some great things in heaven and all you will get. And they say all these things. Vedanta has no problem. And uh, it doesn't make any of these promises. And uh, heaven is green in color and all. We don't say all this. And we, Iradha talks about now. Now. The present. This is what Vedanta talks about. It doesn't worry about the future. In fact, it dismisses the future. It says, yeah, you may go to heaven and all that. But then you have to face this reality even when you go to heaven. So, we Vedansins have absolutely no problem when it comes to these things. 
So somebody, if somebody asks, hey, why couldn't you describe what why couldn't I should I go to heaven or not? Then I will say, go ask your people who talked to, to who taught you about Vaikunta. Why are you asking me? How will I know about Vaikunta? I never went there. Maybe when I go there and come back, I will tell you. That's all I can say. What else can I say? So, so I think the benefit is there. And uh, what I miss by not knowing myself is a lot more than what I, lot, lot more than what I think I have now. And uh, or what I think I am now. So I think that uh, that's a good question actually. And uh, Arjuna actually asks a question to to Krishna somewhere in uh, in the sixth chapter or something. And he says, you know what he says? He says, "Hey Krishna, you are asking me to do all this. You are asking me to fight and follow my dharma and." You are talking also about sannyasa and all that. I am beginning to appreciate all this. What happens if I suddenly die now? Means the death is imminent. There is a war right there. And there is no guarantee that I am going to come out alive. And uh, he says, what happens? And Krishna says a beautiful answer. And he says, Partha naiveha namutra vinasastasya vidyate or something he says. He says, hey Partha, there is no loss. You will pick up the thread wherever you go. This is what he says. It is to be believed. This is the, you, can, you can't prove this stuff. You will pick up the thread. And uh, wherever you go, you, the same thought will come with you. And Vedanta will follow you. And you will have the same opportunity and this discussion, he says. And we need that consolation. We need that consolation. And that is perfect. And uh, and we can believe it because already growing in this culture, this karma idea is very much there. And we know that anything proper we do can only contribute to our benefit in the future. This doesn't require a huge amount of proof. And so Arjuna needed that. Needed that, that uh, assurance. And Krishna assures him. And he says, he says even more, a few more things. Suchinam um, Srimatam Gehe, he says. He says, correct? He says, you will be born in families which are cultured, which think like this, like that, he says. Very beautiful, very beautiful. So, that's how this journey is, uh, Sanjeev. So let's do this. I think uh, it is all of these questions are interesting, but I suggest you write them down uh, so that you, you can ask them next class. It's already late for some of you. I don't want to keep everybody waiting. So perhaps next class, uh, you know, we can spend another half an hour continuing the questions. So please, uh, please uh, write it down if you have to remember it. And then uh, can we continue next class? Okay, let me stop this.